Isn't it interesting that Abram's name was later changed to Abraham? The Most High changed Abram's name to Abraham because he was to be the father of a multitude of nations, mainly through the mixing of Ham's seed, not Japheth's seed. Nevertheless, by seeing all this with evidence and using critical thinking, we should be able to understand how the children of Israel got their brown skin complexion, something we don't see with the people who came to Israel in 1948 called themselves Jews. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. Now Ham had a son named Mizraim, who would be the father of Egypt, or his most ancient name, Kemet, which is an ancient Egyptian word for black. The ancient Egyptians called themselves Kam or Kam O, which means black people or black god people. Everyone knows by seeing countless pictures of Egyptian drawings that the ancient Egyptians were a race of brown black people. It is also a known fact that the other black nations ruled as the pharaohs of Egypt as well. The black Libyans ruled over Egypt in the 22nd to 23rd dynasties under Shoshenk I, Orsakhan II, and Iaput II. This was in the BC era over a thousand years before the Muslim Arabs invaded Egypt or Libya. The Nubians of Sudan and Ethiopia, or Kush, also ruled Egypt during the 25th dynasty. Their pictures from 2,000 or 3,000 years ago show them to be black, despite the white Egyptian Arabs who we commonly see today in North Africa. Now, it is a known fact that when white people visit Egypt today, the locals immediately recognize them as Kawaga, which means foreigners, despite what is portrayed in Hollywood movies. But when African Americans visit Egypt, they are often mistaken for native Egyptians and are referred to as Masri or Mizri, meaning Egyptians in Arabic, which is based off the Hebrew word Mizraim for Egypt. In many cases, African Americans have also been referred to as Ibn Yaqub by the Arab locals when visiting the historical pyramids. Ibn Yaqub basically means son of Jacob in Arabic. So why would the local Arab Egyptians refer to black people as the sons of Jacob or the Egyptians. In the world today, many Christians are realizing that there has been a huge cover-up of real biblical history. Satan knows that if he can hide the true identity of the ancient Egyptians and the sons of Ham, he can keep the real Israelites from waking up to their true identity. So how has this mastermind deception continued for so long? It's easy. The powers to be simply have to present another people to the world to be the Egyptians and the Israelites of the Bible using the mass media or Western education. The mass media for centuries has whitewashed the true black identity of the ancient Egyptians. They know that the head busts, the stone statues, the mummified pharaohs of Egypt, and the pictures on the walls in Egypt depict a different Egyptian than what is shown on TV today. This is why on TV, when our channels report from North Africa, Egypt, Israel, or the Middle East, they always show pictures of white-skinned Arabs. On the movie screen, the Egyptians are just plain white, which is plain wrong. Now, according to biblical history, Abraham's son Ishmael is birthed by a black Egyptian woman named Hagar. In the Bible, she's referred to as Hagar the Egyptian. Hagar later gets a wife for her son Ishmael from black Egypt. Now, this would technically make the Ishmaelite Arabs back then and today black. After all, if Abraham was a black-skinned Shemitic man and Hagar was a black-skinned Hamite, their offspring should also be black. This can be proven by the historical writings of the ancient Arabs. Now, 7th century AD Arab poet Miskeen al darimi quoted, I am Miskeen, for those who know me, my color is dark, the color of the Arabs. Now, Arab linguist Ibn Mandur, who lived around 1260 AD, wrote in his book, Lisan al-Arab, that, quote, the predominant complexion of the Arabs is dark brown is black, and that of the non-Arabs is white. Now, Ibn Mandur also quoted, 
The non-kinky hair is the kind of hair that most non-Arabs like the Romans and Persians have, while kinky hair is the kind of hair that most Arabs have. So if Ishmael had a black Egyptian mother named Hagar, and he also had an Egyptian wife, the evidence of black Egyptian physical traits should be seen in people with true Egyptian ancestry or true black Arab ancestry. The truth is, the white Arabs and the white European Jews' real biblical identity has been hidden today because the term Semitic has been used to describe them since they currently live in biblical Shemitic lands. However, maternal DNA studies reveal that the true origin of today's Arabs and Jews comes from the many sons and women of Japheth, who dwelt in Central Asia, most notably modern-day Southern Russia, Western Russia, AKA the Pale of Settlements, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and Turkmenistan. The Seljuk Turks, the Oghuz Turks, the Uzbeks, Kurds, and other Turkish hunters groups would eventually over time migrate west to the Middle East and Anatolia, which is modern day Turkey. They would adopt Islam as their religion and then conquer North Africa, the Levant, and Jerusalem under the latter name, the Ottoman Turkish Islamic Caliphate. In 1948, the European people of Turkish, Hunnic, Bulgar, Slavic, Khazar, and Germanic descent who converted to Judaism will conquer British Mandate Palestine, otherwise known as Arab Palestine, renaming it Israel. So as you can see, the true ethnicity of Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the Israelites cannot be taught correctly in the church or on TV unless we have a clear understanding of the ethnicity of the ancient Egyptians. This is because the biblical Ishmaelite Arabs were a people heavily mixed with black Egyptian DNA and the Israelites mixed with the black Egyptians for 400 plus years before they left with Moses to journey to the land of Canaan. In addition, two of the 12 tribes of Israel, Ephraim and Manasseh, will come from the stock of a black Egyptian woman named Asenath. And unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, which Asenath, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On, bore unto him. And to Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God said he hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second called he Ephraim, for God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. So to erase the false teaching we have gotten for years, we need to see what ancient historians had to say about the skin color or appearance of the ancient Egyptians. Now Herodotus, a Greek historian who lived and spent time in Egypt during 480 BC, made a statement about a group of people called the Colchians who resembled the Egyptians but lived in above the Turkey-Armenia boundaries along the western slope of the Caucasus Mountains near the Black Sea in what is now called the European country Georgia. Now he quoted, For the fact is I soon came to realize myself and then heard from others later that the Colchians are obviously Egyptian. When the notion occurred to me I asked both the Colchians and the Egyptians about it and found that the Colchians had better recall the Egyptians than the Egyptians did of them. Some Egyptians said that they thought that the Colchians originated with the Pharaoh's Sesostris army, but I myself guessed their Egyptian origin not only because of the Colchians are dark skinned and curly haired, but more importantly because Colchians, Egyptians, and the Ethiopians are the only peoples in the world who practice circumcision and who have always done so. Now, Eschylus who lived around 520 to 456 BC was a Greek poet who admitted in his literary work, The Suppliants, that the Egyptians in his time were black. Now he quoted, the crews must be Egyptian for their black limbs stand out clear to the eye against their white tunics. He also quoted that the Egyptians are presented as having a dark complexion. The entire Egyptian army is said to be black by both the Danids and Danuis when found from his lookout, he distinguishes the Egyptians in their first ship as their black limbs are shown from their white garments. Now, Aristotle, who lived in the 4th century BCE, a Greek scholar and philosopher, quotes this racist statement about the Egyptians. Those who are black are cowards like the Egyptians and the Ethiopians. <laughs> 